Hey everyone, welcome to another 360 in 360 where I cover a certain technology 360 degrees in, let's face it, probably more than 360 seconds if history is anything to go by. And in this video, I want to explore network peering. But before we get started, if this is useful, please subscribe. And if you want to get notified when I do the new videos, uh, click the little bell icon. So let's get to it. I previously talked about a virtual network and that virtual network lives within a particular region within a certain subscription. It cannot span regions, it cannot span subscriptions. And it's an isolation of communication. So I can break that up into various subnets, I put resources inside it, and they can kind of all talk to each other. But if I had other virtual networks, those virtual networks could be in the same region, same subscription, I just want multiple VNets, they could be in different regions, they could be in different subscriptions. But if I had these different subscriptions when, and these different virtual networks, even different Azure AD tenants, maybe I want them to be able to communicate with each other. Now there are options. Um, I can do things like a site-to-site -site VPN. I could set up kind of a VPN gateway in each of these and do VPN connections between them. They would be able to talk, but I'm gonna be using the gateway. I'm gonna be throttled based on that gateway's performance. I could connect them to the same express route circuit. So you can imagine I had express route and I had a certain meet me location. And if I set up express route gateways in all of my virtual networks and connected them to the same circuit, well, they could communicate. But that traffic would hairpin. It would go to the meet me and then come back again, even if they were in the same region. So that's, that's not really ideal. So the better option is to actually use network peering. So with network peering, I can think about, hey, look, I have VNet1, and then maybe I have VNet2, and I can create a peering relationship between them. So now, workloads in those two virtual networks would just be able to communicate. Now, they can be in the same region, or they can actually be in different regions with global VNet peering. Now, with regular VNet peering in the same region, it's roughly a, a penny per gigabyte. So I do pay, I pay for the egress from the region and the ingress coming into that virtual network. So I said the region, I pay for the egress from the VNet over the peer and I pay for the ingress over the peer. If it's a global, they're in different regions, then I pay a little bit more. So there is a difference in the cost between if it's in the same region or if the target of the peer is in a different region. But now I have this complete connectivity. There can be no IP address overlap. So I'm, let's make that super clear. No IP overlap. If there's any overlap of the IP space, they will not be able to be peered. That's super important. Now, what if I also have another VNet? Let's have a VNet over here, VNet3 and I peer that as well. They are non-transitive. So what that means is, if VNet2 is peered to VNet1, and VNet3 is peered to VNet1, there is no peering, no communication between two and three. If I want two and three to be able to talk, well, I would have to add a peer here as well. So if I had lots and lots of VNets, imagine I had uh, VNet4 as well, and that was peered over to here, or I'd have to peer that one, and I'd have to peer that one, I'd get like a full mesh scenario. So it's important to realize they are not transitive in nature. I have to create those peers. Now, I think it's about 500 at the current time, peers I can have on a virtual network. So I can have a lot of them. But if I did kind of have this hub, and then lots of spoke, Topology, it's gonna to be very hard to manage pretty quickly. There are things I can do. So one of the things I can absolutely do is that's if I was just using peering on its own. So another option, if I think about kind of that hub scenario, and then I have multiple spoke virtual networks, and I just peer all of them to the hub. So these are all just peering connections. What I can absolutely do 
is I can have some kind of appliance in a certain subnet in my hub. Now that could be Azure Firewall, it could be a network virtual appliance. And what I'm gonna do is user defined routing and I'll configure UDR on kind of all of these spokes to say, look, if you wanna to get to the IP space of any of the other spokes, your next hop, i.e. the next place to go, is that virtual appliance. So now it will send the traffic to the appliance and it can then forward it on. So to do that, I have to enable that allow forwarded traffic on all of those peering connections. But that would essentially now make these transitive in nature. I just have a peer from the spoke to the hub, but now the spokes would be able to communicate with each other via the hub because I've deployed that Azure Firewall, that NVA. Uh, I could also use a gateway um, for that, but really the, the firewall it is the best option to do that. Another thing I can do here is imagine also there were kind of like on-premises connections, um, there was kind of this network, maybe I had some kind of gateway in the hub, maybe it's express route, maybe it's site-to-site -site VPN. The other cool thing I could do is in the hub, I can allow me to have gateway transit. So I can turn on gateway transit, on this end of the peering connection. And on these ones, I'm gonna say, hey look, use remote gateway. What that will enable me to do is now, the IP spaces of these spokes will kind of be passed through to the targets that are now connecting to here. And likewise, this will know about those IP spaces. So these can now use the connectivity of the hub to get to the connected networks, i.e. on-premises. On-premises via the hub will be able to get to the spokes. So I can really do a lot of cool stuff with kind of having an appliance, which enables the peers to now talk to each other. And then by having gateways in the hub, and again, allowing that gateway transit on the hub's end of the peer, and use remote gateway on the spoke end of the peering, to now get the connectivity of the hub all the way through to those spokes. So I get quite a nice looking combination. Spokes can talk, spokes can talk to the other networks. So there's, there's really good stuff I can do. I do wanna point out permissions. So to establish peering, I, I'm basically, you can almost think of it like creating two unidirectional peers. It, it's not that exactly, but I do have to kind of create the peer that way and then create the peer this way for it to complete. To create the peer on my end, I have to be a network contributor, or there's, there's really four permissions I have to have to manage it, and they're outlined in the Microsoft document. On the network I want to peer to, there is a peer action I have to have. So what I do is I create a custom role that just has peer action, and I give that to the user here that's establishing the peering in that direction on that target virtual network. And then the people on this virtual network need to be network contributor, to establish the peer in the other direction where they need the peer action. So we're getting the same custom role. And then once both ends have been kind of created, I now complete that peering and it's ready to go. So just realize there are those permissions. Think of it if I have a lasso, um, one of my customers use this analogy, um, I want to lasso something. Well, the target of my lasso, I have to have a permission to be able to get the lasso onto it. So that's that peer action. That's the only thing I need on the target virtual network, but I do need that permission. I can't just peer to any virtual network I want. I have to have that peer action. So that's kind of network peering. The idea of I'm using the Azure backbone. I'm gonna get the full bandwidth available of the VMs and the resources. There's no throttling, there's no gateway being used here. Again, I pay that nominal charge. If it's within region, it's like a penny per gigabyte. Again, I pay it for egress and ingress for my virtual network. Um, if it's between regions, global, I pay a little bit more for that traffic to flow. But it's gonna give me that great connectivity. I can enable those spokes to talk if I want to, and I can even extend that communication. Make sure I don't have overlapping IPs between any network that is a direct peer. And uh, good luck, till next time, take care. Please. Like, subscribe, comment, and share.